In this video I want to show you how to build 3 custom reusable hooks inside React. So the first hook that we will implement is use local storage. Why do we need it? Because we want to work with local storage in React hooks way. And this is really easy to do. As you can see here I already created one component cookie banner. Let's check this out. So this is just a plain normal component, but we used here use local storage hook. And this is the idea how we will implement it, it is not implemented yet. So we have our custom hook use local storage and we are providing inside the name of the key inside local storage where we want to save this property. And here back we are getting the value and the setter, so it is working exactly like for example use state hook. And the idea is that we have in sync our local storage and this value inside memory. So we have just a setter and a property, here we have a button and we are calling here our setter and we are providing inside some string, for example closed, so we can check it later. And here we have our logic where we are using cookies banner, so we want to show our cookies banner only when this property is an empty string. If inside this property we have closed, this means that we should not show this banner. So this is a typical API of our custom hook. So we have a use local storage and we actually could also provide here a default value, but we don't need it in this case. Now let's try to implement this hook together. This is why I want to jump inside hooks, use local storage and create here our function. So here we need to export our use local storage and create it before. So we have our function use local storage and we are getting two arguments. First of all it's a key and secondly it's a default value. And by default here we have an empty string, in this case we are sure that it won't be broken. Now inside we want to use use state hook, so we are not using just a local storage, but we are storing our state inside memory. This is where here let's create a value and set value and this will be both working with local storage and here we want to use use state hook and we must provide inside initial value. But we want to read initial value from local storage, this is why here I want to use a function. And I want to return here our local storage dot get item. And inside we are getting the item by our key that we provided and if it's not there then we want to take our default value. And this is really good that here we wrote empty string so it won't be broken. After this we just want to return an array in exactly the same way how we are doing with use state hook. This is why here I am writing return value and set value. Which actually means we are just giving the setters and values outside. So actually outside we simply update the value inside our memory. And now here we can use use effect hook to update local storage also. This is why here I can write use effect and we want to trigger here the setting inside local storage. So here we have a couple of dependencies, first of all our key and secondly a value. Which actually means every single time when our value is changed or our key is changed we want to set it to local storage. So here we just need a single liner, local storage set item, key and value. In this case every single time when outside by using the setter we are updating our use state here, we are also triggering use effect and setting the value inside local storage. Let's check if it's working now. As you can see I don't have any errors in the console so let's reload the page. And as you can see cookie banner is there and we can take a look inside local storage, I have cookie banner and the value is empty. Now I'm clicking here close banner and actually this banner disappeared. Because here inside local storage cookie banner value is closed. And as you can see it is super simple to use it outside, this is just a single liner. So we have here our hook use local storage with some key and here we are getting back a value and a setter. And actually this line is working exactly like use state hook. This is why it's extremely easy to use it everywhere in any application. The second hook that I want to show you is called use online and actually we can use it to determine if user has internet or not. As you can see here is the usage, I have here a component online and here is the usage. So this is simply the calling of our hook use online without any parameters. And we are getting back true or false which we can use inside our markup. For example here we rendered I am online and here I am offline when this value is false. Now we must implement this hook. This is why let's jump inside hooks and create here a new hook useOnline.js. So here we have our function useOnline and we don't have any arguments here. We also need to export this function by default, so export default useOnline. Now the question is how we will write it inside. 
Actually here we also would use use effect and use state. So first of all let's try to use here use state. So here let's create our state. We will have here online status and here set. So set online status. And the question is what we are using here, of course use state and what is the default value. And actually default value we must read from window navigator because we have this information there. And actually I want to use an additional function for this because it is not supported in all browsers and you might use a fallback here. This is why here let's create a function get online, which is just a function without any arguments and we want to return here navigator.online if we have it, in other case we are returning turning here true. In this case we will always be online and this is not a problem and our application won't be broken. Now inside you state here we can use get online function. After this we can simply return here our online status. And actually we are almost done. The question is how we will react on events when user is going online or offline and we need to subscribe to them inside use effect. This is why here we must write use effect and inside provide a function. And actually inside this function we want once to subscribe to two listeners. This is why here I must provide an array without any dependencies, because we must trigger it only once. What we are writing here is window dot add event listener and here we are providing online. And actually we have online event and offline event. And what we want to do here we want to call our setter. So we are calling here set online status and here we will have true and we want to do exactly the same for offline. So here we have offline event and we are doing set online status false. So we simply update our state inside our custom hook. But it is not all. I also need to import here on the top use state hook and also use effect hook. And now we are good to go. As you can see this is a custom hook that we can use everywhere and check for online. Let's check this out. I don't have any errors here inside console. I am reloading the page and I am seeing I am online. Which actually means our hook is working and we are getting this information from navigator inside window. And what is really nice we have here react hooks approach and not just some event listeners with use effect inside every single component where we need this logic. And the last hook that I want to show you is click outside. In every single application we have models or tooltips that we need to close when we are clicking outside of them. And this is a typical example of it. As you can see I have here a component click outside and here we have a state for show tooltip. And as you can see here in markup we have quite a lot of code. First of all here we have a button with on click event where we just change this set show tooltip so we show and hide our tooltip. And we also have here a markup with our tooltip. So actually we show this tooltip when our state isn't true. And this code doesn't have anything to do with click outside. So we must bring the logic of clicking outside to this component. And actually we can easily do it with our custom use click outside component. So as you can see here our use click outside is a custom hook where we must provide a reference. This is why here we created a reference just by using use ref. Here we have our click reference. After this we must attach this click reference to any DOM element where you want. In this case we are attaching it directly inside div in our root DOM element inside component. The second parameter of use click outside is a callback. This is a function which will be triggered when we clicked outside. And this is just a function and inside we can call whatever we want. In our case here we want to set our show tooltip to false and close this tooltip. And this is the typical usage of tooltips or model behavior. This is why now we must implement this custom hook click outside that we can reuse everywhere. This is why here let's jump inside hooks and create use click outside dot js. And here we have our function export default use click outside and we must create it here on the top. So we have our use click outside and we are getting here first of all a reference and secondly our callback function. And now inside we don't need to do a lot. We actually just need to have a click handler attached to our DOM element. This is why here we need a use effect because we want to attach it every single time when our component was re-rendered. This is why here we must provide a function inside use effect and as you can see I don't have any dependencies here because actually I want to trigger it every single time after component rendering. And here inside use effect I want to do document add event listener click 
and as a listener I want to provide the function handle click and we will create it in a second. Most important part that this code is super bad, because actually we are attaching here a listener every single time after render, and this is bad for performance, because we have at the end indefinite amount of listeners. This is why what we must do here, and this is mandatory for performance, we want to remove this listener, and we want to remove it every single time when component is destroyed. This is why here I want to return a function, and inside we want to write document, remove event listener, and here we are providing our click and handle click function. In this case we won't have any performance problems. So now we just need to implement this handle click function, which we attached from the outside. This is why here let's create our function handle click, and here we just get our event. So what we want to do with click inside, we simply need to check our reference. So we can check if we have reference current, which means our element is being rendered. And now we need to check if we contain a target of event where we clicked. So we can write here not ref current and here contains event target. And actually when we are inside this if, we want to call our callback. In other case, we don't want to call it. So once again, what we are doing here, this is our event handler, which we attach to our DOM element. And here, first of all, we must check that we have a DOM node inside ref current. In other case, we can't check contains. And here we are checking that our current element does not contain event target. And event target is where we clicked. So we are checking if this element where we clicked is not inside our DOM element. In this case, we want to call our callback. And this is exactly click outside logic. But also here we must import our use effect because it was not auto imported. So use effect from react and let's reload our page. As you can see we don't have any problems and here we can toggle our tooltip. So I'm clicking on the button, you can see our tooltip, I'm clicking again and we don't see it at all. Now we can check our hook with click outside. So actually our tooltip is there and now I'm clicking outside of the tooltip. And as you can see it disappeared, because actually our hook attached an event listener and this callback was called when we clicked outside. But actually you must be cautious with your CSS when you are writing it, because in this case here you can check, we have our div and it takes much more space than just the tooltip and the button, which means when we are clicking here we are also inside this div, and only when we are clicking outside somewhere here we are really closing this div. So together we built three custom reusable hooks that you can now use inside every single project. And also, if you are interested in 5 coding tasks that you can see almost in every JavaScript interview, make sure to check this video also.